Today we're looking at the LZX Fortress in the second part of a patching tutorial. We recommend that you go back and watch the first video for a rundown of the basics of the module. In this video we're going to specifically explore the way you can use Fortress to process external video inputs. So without further ado, let's get started. So here you can see I have an external video playing off a computer. The Luma out, going to the composite in so you can see the raw video. Since this video is black and white, I don't have to worry about the color outputs, I can just use the Luma. I know I'm going to be taking this video to multiple destinations, so the first thing I'm going to do is patch it into a multiple. That will allow me three different versions of the signal to further play with. The first thing I'm going to do is take the RGB outputs from my fortress and plug those into channel A on a marble index. You could also go directly into the visual cortex. So on my fortress, I'm going to make sure all of my switches are down, all of these are down, and all my CV controls are set to zero. I'm going to take one of these outputs for my black and white video. I'm going to go into the voltage control input on ADC1. As I turn this up, you'll start to see a basic colorizer effect. Each of the ADCs is capable of slicing an incoming video signal into eight distinct bands. Those bands then go to the palette selector. And as I switch through these, you get access to all of the different Fortress palettes. We'll keep it down there for now. If I switch this into ADC2, you'll get essentially the same effect. If I go into ADC1, plug nothing into ADC2, start to bring up oscillator 2, we'll get oscillator 2 mixed into ADC2. Since I'm in program mode 000, ADC1 and ADC2 are being combined by a logical operation dictated by ADC3. So I can go through all these different modes. If I take ADC2 down again, this is going to show us a very basic quantized colorizer effect. Let's quickly look at some of the other program modes. If I switch D0 up to 1, we now have an RGB shift register. If I bring my oscillator up, you start to get enough detail to where you can begin to see the image. So in this case, even though we have an external input plugged into ADC1, it is still using oscillator 1 to define the clock for our shift register. This allows you to do some neat mosaic effects. If I switch D1 up to 1, we're now in the feedback shift register mode. And again, we have a variety of possibilities here. And if I switch D0 to 0 and D1 to 1, we're now in cellular autonomous mode. And of course, by switching the D2 switch up, any of these modes can be set to animate. So of course from here we can begin to patch in other ways. So I'm going to take a multiple output from my bridge. I'm going to put that into the through channel on a passage. I'm going to put LFO1 into the input. And this is going to give me some modulation on my image. So I'm going to take this output and I'm going to go to the voltage control input on oscillator 1 and start to turn that up. So now we're beginning to introduce some frequency modulation based on the incoming image into oscillator 1. The amount of this frequency modulation is dictated by this LFO and a passage. ADC3 is going to give me some really cool control over the overall palette. So I'm going to take another output from passage, put that into my ADC3 input, take a separate LFO, plug that into input 2, and because my through inputs are normaled, that image is going to flow through. And as I turn this up, 
we start to get color modulation based on the light and dark values of the image. Now if we play with the different counting options, we'll start to get some different effects. We could change the direction of movement. Of course, we could change the overall frequency ranges. and the speed. Go. The last thing I'm going to do is take another multiple of my original image, put that onto the opacity VC control on channel B of the marble index. Make sure that controls all the way up, opacity is all the way down. And I have channel B just going to the mix. So I can define a solid color to sit on top of the fortress pattern. To give me a little bit more control, I'm going to use a doorway first. Take the key out from the doorway into opacity voltage control. And now I can selectively choose parts of my image that I wish to shine through on channel B. And of course I could switch through different compositing modes to get different effects. From here I can switch through the different program modes get some different variations. I could switch through all of my different color palettes. I can adjust all of my ranges, my sliders. So that should give you some idea of the colorization possibilities inside Fortress. Exploring the different programs and palettes gives you a ton of variation. And being able to voltage control all of the ADCs and oscillators gives an additional layer of complexity. In our next patch, we'll look at some other ways to use Fortress to colorize an external image. As you can see, Fortress offers a wealth of colorizing opportunities. However, the preset palettes might not be to your taste. In this patch, we'll look at some ways to adjust the overall RGB output of Fortress. To begin, I'm going to take an external video signal and go into the voltage control of ADC1. We'll just quickly take a look at what that looks like. So again, I'm using marble index, but you don't necessarily have to. You can also go directly into your visual cortex. Until you get very familiar with Fortress, it's useful to zero everything out before patching anything in, just so you know where you're at. It gives you a strong, consistent starting point for your patches. So here we see our video being composited, and of course we could switch through the preset palettes And while these built-in palettes are great, sometimes it's nice to be able to mix your own color palettes. So I'm going to take that output, and I'm going to put it into the three inputs on a color quartz. Although I'm using a color quartz in this case, you can try using a lot of different modules for this purpose. So I'll take those RGB outputs, go back into the RGB inputs on my marble index, zero everything out so you can see what we're working with. So with my opacities all down, if I just turn up the red, green, and blue channels respectively, I should be getting a pretty identical match to the output of the fortress. From here I can start to adjust individual color channels and start to create my own palettes. You can also start to play with the opacity control but realize that they'll simplify your colorization effect because they'll effectively remove parts of the image underneath. So this gives you a way to further experiment with the different palettes and fine tune your own values. You may also find that you might want to modulate these RGB outputs. So for that, I'm going to go into Passage. I'm going to take the outputs of Passage into the color chords. On the 
inputs from passage, I'm going to take the x, y, and pressure outputs from my Escher sketch. So now, by using my stylus, if you turn smoothing about halfway, you can sort of use the different locations on the pad almost as presets for your different color palettes. The Fortress also gives you a direct output from the digital to analog converter. Let's take a look at this really quick on its own. This is basically showing the different values that are being passed into the palettes before color selection. This gives me another black and white output I can use in further compositing applications. In this case, I'm going to go into the opacity VC on channel B of my marble index. Bring that opacity voltage control up. And this gives us another option to start adjusting the color output of our image. You can also take additional inputs, such as a ramp, put that into, say, ADC2. The comparator on the ADC2 is going to take the incoming ramp and break it up into eight slices. These will additionally affect the colorization. So now with my patch set up, I can start to shift through different palettes by using my Escher sketch. I could begin to introduce further modulation with ADC3 by applying the third oscillator. I could of course also record. And play that back. And I could play with the overall sliders and adjust my overall palette. And of course, play with any of the compositing applications on Marble Index. So those are just a few of the tips and tricks you can use to take your RGB outputs from Fortress and adjust your color palettes. In this final patch, I'd like to look at one of my favorite parts about the Fortress. While it can be used as an all-in-one ecosystem comprised of three oscillators and three analog to digital converters, you can also use many of those elements separately thanks to the dedicated outputs. This gives the module a lot of flexibility in a relatively small system. So in this patch, I'm going to use an external color video input playing off a computer. You can see the raw video feed on your screen now. I'm going to take each of those color channels and put them into a different voltage control input for a different ADC on the Fortress. And we'll plug those outputs into channel A on our marble index. So already you can see a really nice complicated result. If I turn down these other two inputs, I'll turn them all down, and I'm going to make sure everything's zeroed out. So you can see as I bring in my red input, my green input, and my blue input. Each of these are controlling slightly different things. Now this isn't a way to recreate the full RGB input, but rather it's a way to add additional complexity to the colorization effects since we have three independent signals for each of the three ADCs. This gives you a really nice, super sophisticated colorization effect. Now I can switch through the different program modes to start to use the oscillators as clocks, which would give me a range of different effects. Or I can keep it in program mode 000 and use the oscillators for other parts of my patch. So I'm going to take my two oscillators, patch them into a color quartz, the RGB output from color quartz, go into channel B, 
and turn this up. Bring that down. So now you can see a basic mix of the oscillators. This mix is not represented in the RGB outputs of Fortress, since those oscillators are not currently being patched into the ADCs. If I want, I could take my Luma output from my external video feed and use that to voltage control oscillator 1. We could also take the dedicated DAC output, put that onto layer 3, and get some of the original video back in there. So now we can mix between our oscillator mix and our colorized video signal. And we could play with these in a lot of different ways. And we could obviously adjust the palettes, and get different results. And we still have oscillator 3 available. So oscillator 3 is a low frequency oscillator. So I'm going to patch that straight into the opacity voltage control on my marble index. And turn that up. <clears throat> so now the speed of oscillator 3 is controlling the opacity of my color chords mix, which is mixing together oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. Meanwhile, I have a whole separate colorization scheme going on from my ADCs. I could start to play with different oscillator settings. I can scroll through the different ADCs, adjust different logical combinations, play with different palettes. And I can even start to enter the different program modes. That'll get pretty chaotic pretty quickly. So those are just a few more techniques for getting complex results from Fortress when used as a colorizer. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, please leave any questions or ideas for future videos in the comments below.